Every day we see the evidence of the fight for disability rights without knowing what it took to stand up for disabled citizens. Inaccessibility and inequality was the reality for people with disabilities until one man decided to take a stand. He took a stand against discrimination targeted towards the disabled by devoting his life entirely to the cause of their rights. After witnessing disabled children in Vietnam being mistreated, he began traveling nationwide to advocate for disabled individuals by collecting stories, presenting speeches, co-founding the AAPD, and drafting the ADA. He was one of, if not the most, influential activist to ever take part in the disability rights movement. His name is Justin Whitlock Dart Jr., the father of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Justin Dart Jr. was born on August 29, 1930, into a wealthy family as his father, Justin Whitlock Dart Sr., was a successful business executive for his father-in-law's company, the Walgreens drugstore chain. At age 18, Dart contracted polio. He was admitted into a Los Angeles hospital and informed by doctors that he was expected to live for only three more days. However, these three days lengthened to 53 years as Dart recovered. Although he lived from his deadly encounter with polio, Dart was left a wheelchair user for the rest of his life. After being diagnosed with polio, Justin attended the University of Houston from 1951 to 1954. Justin originally took to a career in teaching, but the university refused to grant his teaching certificate because he was a wheelchair user. After facing discrimination himself, Dart organized his first human rights group to oppose racism. Following college, Dart went into a field of business in 1956. He ended up building several successful companies in Mexico and Japan, including Japan Tupperware, which he started in 1962 and in three years had expanded to around 25,000 employees. Dart used his businesses to provide work for women and people with disabilities. In Japan, he took disabled people out of institutions and gave them jobs in his companies. He even ended up organizing some of them into Japan's first wheelchair basketball team. He hired many women, including Yoshiko Dart, who would later become his wife. During a visit to Saigon, Vietnam in 1966 to investigate a rehabilitation center for children with polio, Dart found conditions where disabled children were left on concrete floors to starve. One child, a young girl dying there before him, took his hand and looked into his eyes. That scene, he would later write, is burned forever in my soul. For the first time in my life, I understood the reality of evil and that I was a part of that reality. He said, I told Yoshiko, we cannot go on as we have been. Our lives have got to mean something. We've got to get into this fight and stop this evil. It was this moment that made Justin realize that he wanted to dedicate himself to the cause of human and disability rights. Both Justin and Yoshiko moved to Texas in 1978 and devoted themselves to local disability activism. From 1980 to 1985, Dart was a member and then chair of the Texas Governor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities. In 1981, President Ronald Reagan appointed Dart to be the Vice Chair of the National Council on Disability. Dart and others on the council drafted a national policy that called for national civil rights legislation to end the centuries-old discrimination of people with disabilities. This eventually became known as the Americans with Disabilities Act. The ADA. Justin and Yoshiko Dart traveled across America to gather support for the ADA. Justin Dart held 62 public forums in all 50 states as well as Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and Guam to collect stories of discrimination. Uh, we traveled 50 states five different times. We collected discrimination diaries and uh, stories from so many people, you know, thousands of people in the different states toward the passage of the ADA, and we brought back uh, boxes and boxes of all those. A total of 5,000 stories were collected and formed the ADA Diaries. Examples of discrimination before the ADA are shown in the ADA Diaries, where people explain their experiences and desire for a change. They expressed their mutual support for this document that would improve the lives of people with disabilities. And Justin was a very uh, good writer and also understood what the people wanted. During the meeting, he just wrote up, what did you think about this? This okay? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, you better not do this. And came back, came to a National Council. At the meeting, he presented this. Justin gave out this uh, copy of the draft of the national policy to every council member. And then they took time and they read it. And, well, this is very interesting. But uh, President Reagan is not going to touch this. Justin said, well, well, whatever you think, but uh, this was written by 
people with disabilities in all 50 states. So we should reflect their voices. So Joe Dusenberry stood up and said, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear a motion to you know, approve this document. And nobody, nobody opposed it. So unanimously, it, it was approved. Finally, the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 was signed by President Bush on July 26, 1990. The Americans with Disabilities Act was very important because it sparked a new way of life for people that had disabilities. Before the act, accessibility to many public buildings and sources of transportation was very difficult due to no building requirements. Now, because of the ADA, there are curb ramps, parking spaces, more public buses, and trains with automatic lifts, etc. The ADA requires that each public facility should be designed and constructed in such manner that the facility is readily usable by individuals with disabilities. The path of travel in public facilities must also be accessible to those with disabilities, such as people with wheelchairs. Newly constructed or altered streets, roads, and highways must contain curb ramps or other sloped areas at any intersection. There is a minimum requirement ratio of handicapped parking spaces to regular parking spaces. There are also many requirements for handicapped bathrooms, specifically at least one large bathroom stall in each restroom facility. The ADA has many more standards, but mostly emphasizes the fact that people with disabilities may not be discriminated against. Additionally, job opportunities are equal to people with disabilities. Although the ADA was successful, some people opposed the act. They claimed that it was unfair to business owners who were required to accommodate disabled citizens. In fact, after the ADA was passed, disabled worker accommodation costs increased. Additionally, employers were reluctant to hire disabled citizens since they would be opening the themselves to possible lawsuits. However, after 27 years, the ADA has created a more inclusive work environment and helped better the lives of people with disabilities. Justin Dark continued to advocate and show that the benefits of the ADA outweighed these consequences. The darts again toured the country visiting every state and holding public forums attended by more than 30,000 people. Everywhere he went, DART presented the ADA as a civil rights act of the future. DART also met with members of Congress and staff, as well as President Bush and members of the cabinet. In 1995, Justin co-founded the American Association of People with Disabilities, which unites the diverse community of disabled citizens and implements the goals of the ADA. The AAPD helps connect the disabled community with friends, family, businesses, schools, and the community in general to spread the word. Justin Dart even said, AAPD gives us the opportunity for harmonious unity and will help create the strong voice needed to overcome thousands of years of attitudinal and physical barriers. Dart suffered a series of heart attacks in late 1997, which prevented him from traveling. He continued, however, to advocate for the rights of people with disabilities and attended numerous events, rallies, demonstrations, and public hearings. Toward the end of his life, he urged his beloved colleagues in struggle, listen to the heart of this old soldier, our lives, our children's lives, the quality of the lives of billions and future generation hangs in the balance. I cry out to you from the depths of my being. Humanity needs you. Lead, lead, lead the revolution of empowerment. Dart's words have become a call for action for many who advocate for the issues of inclusion and for all who believe in justice. He never gave up and constantly worked hard to improve our world today. His perseverance through facing discrimination himself and his vigorous efforts reveal his hard work and willpower to improve our world. Justin Whitlock Dart Jr. unfortunately passed on June 22, 2002 at his home in D.C. at 71 years old from complications related to post-polio syndrome. Dart's work as an activist did not go unnoticed. For his hard work, he was given many honorable titles and awards such as the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is only presented to individuals that dedicated their lives to the welfare of a cause. President Bill Clinton presented the medal to Justin Dart in 1998 for his hard work and continuous advocacy for disabled citizens' civil and individual rights. For many members of the disability community, Justin Dart is an icon for the modern disability movement. Justin Dart believed that everyone should have the opportunity to achieve their dreams. By never giving up, he has given 57 million Americans with disabilities who strive to be a part of the American dream a chance. His efforts to improve the lives of people with disabilities have inspired and encouraged millions of disabled Americans to overcome obstacles so they can lead more independent and successful lives. I respect you, I believe in you, and I love you. Together, we shall 
overcome.